Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us for today's live training and role play session on goal setting. This is going to be a heavy content webinar uh, where I'm going to go over a lot of different things. Allison um, is here to chime in as well. I do believe that we're going to have some time at the end to actually role play setting goals with a few team members. Don't volunteer just yet because it's going to get kind of personal. It's going to get kind of personal. So once I go through it all and we get to the role play part, you know, I'd be curious to see who wants to step up and do some live goal setting in front of just, I don't know, three, four, 500 people. <laughs> um, of course, we are recording this webinar. So for those of your team members that couldn't jump on live, the recording will be posted about two or three hours after we wrap up the call. That way they can watch it. I have a feeling this is going to be a call that team members are going to get a lot of value from and owners watching this. Um, if you don't have your team members on this call now, have them watch the recording in the next day or two. I think it's going to be very impactful. Once we do have a role play winner, we got a CWC swag bag that we'll have sent out. I think people really love those. That's awesome. And let's just go ahead and get started. When it comes to setting goals, y'all, I want to talk at a really high level, high level first about you and your opportunity, right? What it is that you have the potential for. I'm pretty certain anybody watching this, this call live or the recording doesn't have uh, a capped income potential, right? So I want you to start to really think bigger about what you're capable of. Think bigger about what you deserve. But we can't just put it out into the universe and say, I deserve to make $80,000 this year, $60,000 this year, if you know, right? It's not just going to happen because you put it out in the universe. You're going to have to do the work. But I want you to start thinking bigger about your opportunity there within your agency and start to really think about you being the CEO of your own business. So I just promoted all of you team members to be chief executive officer of your business within your agency's business. Many of you work for captive carriers like Allstate, Farmers, State Farm. Some of you are independents, which kind of also have a business within a business because they're representing multiple carriers. But your agency owner owns their business and you're a team member. Well, I think you're a lot more than that, right? You are the CEO of your own business. What's beautiful is about your business, y'all, you have literally uncapped income potential, uncapped income potential and in growth. You wanna raise, pick up the phone. You wanna take care of your personal goals, which we're gonna talk about today, get to work, follow the process, be consistent, operate at a high level, get as much money as you can in your business. And you basically have zero expenses. You know, your agency owner is paying for the training, providing leads, resources, marketing, support staff, paying the rent, utilities, overhead, by the paper. Y'all know how much paper costs and envelopes? Don't waste that stuff. Only print, CWC stuff, nothing else. They're providing all of that to you. You have zero expenses, uncapped income potential. Start to see yourself as an entrepreneur. Y'all, we need to understand something. This is a sales organization right? If you're here to just give service with a smile, that's not enough, right? Service with a smile in a fast food industry works just fine. In fact, it's kind of rare. Like I love going to Chick-fil-A and trying to see how many of my pleasures I can get out of them. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Right. They use your name. They get your order right. Versus I go to Burger King or Wendy's or something like that. Depending on the time of day, it's not the same experience. That's good service, in the food industry. What is good service in our industry, in the insurance and protection industry? It's not just being sweet, polite, fast, friendly, efficient, knowledgeable, service with a smile. No, we have to put ourselves in position to help our customers when they need us. How can we do that if we don't have all of their policies with us? If the policies with us aren't at the right coverages, if they don't have every policy that they need, like umbrellas, life insurance, things like that. How can we truly serve our customers if we haven't sold them? See, service is sales, sales is service. And when you follow the CWC sales process scorecard and the top paths that we teach, it's all about being a trusted advisor and consultative based selling, right? We're not pushing product that people don't need just to try to get a raise to get more income for a business within a business. No, we're seeking to meet the needs of our customers. All right. And this is a sales organization. So all of you, congratulations. You're now the CEO 
of your own business within your agency's business. Let's talk about goals. See, there's a difference between the goals that your agency owner or manager set for you. Those to me are quotas, right? If they say, I want you to hit 35 policies in a month, or I want you to write $25,000 a month in premium or a certain number of the course of a quarter or a year, those are numbers that they're giving to you, likely with good reason, right? Their, their expectations are to make sure that you're successful and that you're doing well for yourself, but that you're also profitable to them. Maybe not in the short term. They might actually be losing money on you in the short term, even if you're writing a fair amount of business. But what they're doing is they're buying more renewals and, and to pay themselves as time goes on, maybe working to hit agency goals and things like that. But a number that they give you is a legit number for them. That's their goal for you. But I see that to you as more of like a quota, right? What I want you to focus on is creating and crafting your goals, right? If you say, my owner says he wants 30 items a month from me, 30 policies a month from me, I'm going to shoot for 40. But then do what it actually takes to make it happen. Now we're talking. Now we're talking your personal goals. Well, how do you create them? How do you create them? That's what we're going to talk about today. But before I dive into that, drive. You know, you got to have the internal drive and passion and enthusiasm to push and drive yourself. I promise you, you will get so much further in this career, so much further within your agency, so much further in life if you motivate, push, and drive yourself. Nobody likes to be pushed, right? Let's push and drive yourself. And they're coming along with you for the ride, your agency owner, your fellow team members and stuff like that. Your drive, your passion, your enthusiasm, that's something that has to come from within. And sometimes, y'all, it might be tough. It might be tough sometimes to stay positive. You're getting lots of rejection, lots of no's. You're leaving tons of voicemail, right? Voicemails. You're sending all kinds of emails. And maybe you don't talk to many people one day. Or maybe you just get way more no's than yeses. Maybe you go a day without any yeses. It can be kind of a grind. Stay positive. What will never fail you is the process and persistence. The process and persistence. You consistently follow the process at a high level. I promise you the results will come. I promise you. But you got to stay positive and don't just wait for your agency owner or manager to sit down with you and talk about next year's goals. I don't like annual reviews. Now, if your agency does them, that's great. That's fine. But I'm not a big fan of let's sit down. Let's sit down and talk about your next year's goals. All right. I like daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals. I want to see people growing. What if I meet with a team member in early, early in the year in January and we set goals and they start to crush by like March or April, right? I want to see that bar moving and it's going to move a lot quicker with your drive, with your passion, with your enthusiasm, okay? You're going to go much further relying on yourself to drive rather than being pushed along by the agency owner and or manager. So I have a little chat bubble here. So I'd love to see some chats here in the chat. What are some personal financial goals that you're working to accomplish? And I'm not going to use full names or anything like that, but send me a chat. Are you trying to pay down debt? Are you trying to save for a car, save for a home, save for a new apartment, maybe to get married, have babies, um, take a nice trip somewhere, do something fancy for your family for Christmas. You know, what are some goals that you have? Holy smokes. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see here. So we have wanting to pay off student loans, um, go on vacation with the whole family, paying off debt. Stephen wants to buy his first home. Um, Hayden wants to start a family. Ryan's going on vacations. Uh, Paul wants to have a nice savings account, six months in savings. Christian says, all the above. Cody says, I want to be debt free. Swirlin says, I want to start my own business. Cody, buy a house. Um, Tanya, I work hard to play hard. So I guess you like to have fun and have hobbies that you want to do. A lot of people say, I'm paying down debt, buying a house, pay off my husband's car, vacations, trips, become an agency owner. I love this stuff, y'all. Really good. Somebody said, leave my ex. Okay. You don't want to be dependent on somebody else. You don't have to. Um, put money in savings, pay off some credit cards, start building a home, new truck, bigger turbo. What's a turbo? Is that a car or something? Treat my family right. 
says Jose, right? Really good. Really, really good, y'all. These are personal goals. College funds. Retire my future mother-in-law. Wow, you're, you're, you're great, Marisol. Just want to retire your future mother-in-law. Have a baby. Hire my own Joseph. That's cool, Jared. I love that. All right, no more personal goals. Isn't this amazing? And some of y'all are saying, like Joseph just said, all the above. You guys have big goals, right? You can accomplish them exactly where you are. Exactly where you are. You have the opportunity to take advantage of your position and the opportunity that your agency owner has given to you to just really crush through those personal goals. Why keep putting them off? All right, let's start working today to hit your personal goals. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our personal financial goals, like all these things that everybody just chatted, all these different things, and we're going to back into creating your actual goals at the agency, right? Your goals at the agency. So how are we going to do that? Let's talk about this. Define a personal goal, and there needs to be a dollar amount to it, right? If you want to pay off your credit cards, how much is it, right? If you want to save to buy a new car, save for that down payment or whatever, what is this specific dollar amount and when do you want to complete it, right? Not just someday, not next year, when. I want you to get really specific with these goals. Then what I want you to do is sit down with your agency owner or, and or manager if they, if they handle a lot of goal setting and comp and stuff like that. Go over your actual commission plan, your actual compensation plan. I'm not telling you to go to your owner and say, hey, hey, I really want to pay off my credit card. It's going to get like a $9,000 raise, please. Thanks. Nope. You want to raise, pick up the phone, get to work, right? As time goes on, I promise you, y'all, Craig says this all the time. You are paid, people are paid in direct proportion to the value that they bring to the agency and the problems that they solve. A big problem that the agencies has is we need a lot of production and we need growth. The more you can impact that, the more you're going to grow. I can promise you. So sit down with your agency owner or manager. Talk about your personal goals. And don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. You might be surprised. Your owner could have been like me and Allie. We were broke as hell once. I mean, she talks about it all the time. We were both broke. Not at the same time. Um, but, you know, we, we had our own struggles. I've had more debt than I would ever want to have any of you to have, right? Um, don't be ashamed to talk about how you might not be as prepared as you want to be to do certain things. Let's start fixing it. Let's start fixing it today, right? So sit down with them, give them your specific goal, the dollar amount and the time frame. Is it a smaller amount maybe that you can handle in two or three months? Is it a bigger amount that might take six to 12 months? Is it a really big amount that might take a few years? If so, then let's find some smaller nuggets that we can start hitting a lot closer. But go over with them what your goals are in the time frame and look at your comp plan and see what you're gonna need to do different. How much more new business that you're going to need to generate on the service side to pass to the sales team or generate it and write it yourself? If you're a sales team, how much more new business that you have to generate um, to make those goals happen? And then you figure out what the difference is. So let's say I'm just throwing out round numbers here. You're making, I hate to talk specific comp. I'm going to use really low numbers, right? What if, let's say you're making $250 a month in commissions. And um, you want to make, need to be making $500 a month in commissions, right? What would you have to do differently to make that happen? Would it be five more sales? Would it be 10 more policies? What, what would it be? What would the difference be? Guess what? That's now your total production goal. So let's say you were averaging 20 items a month and now you need to write 27. 27 items is your goal. It's now not just a number that your owner gave to you that you might think was picked out of thin air. And it wasn't, I promise you. The reason they're giving you goals is because they're looking at the total pie and figuring out what they need total. And they're kind of divvying out based on ability and opportunity. But the 27 items is now your goal. And see, this is what we're going to role play in just a few minutes. And I know it might be kind of convoluted, might not be specific, but I just want to see what the example would be like to have this kind of conversation. So now we have your production goal. Well, how are we going to get there? Other numbers that you need to know or what are your close rate? Now, you might not know this right now, but your agency owner likely has access to it. Um, what's your close rate? How many quotes do you average currently? Well, based on your close rate and current quote rate, you need more production. It's not just going to happen just because you will it to the universe. What we're going to have to do is increase our activity. What level of activity will be required to hit those quotes mm -hmm. And items and production, right? 
So we're backing into our personal activity goals. So we've got our production goal, activity goals, quote goals, all that stuff. And guess whose goals they are? Yours. They're yours, not your owners and managers. Before I move on in the process, Allison, I've been talking about 15 minutes or so. I still have several more to go, but I saw you come back online. Um, what are your thoughts on this? What feedback yeah. or impact, input would you like to share? Yeah, I just really wanted to tell people <laughs> to listen. Like, I know that we just want to snap our fingers and fix things. We live in an instantaneous world, instantaneous satisfaction. But, you know, Joseph touched briefly on the bumps and bruises that we've had financially. But, um, and I'll share this in the CWC group, a post, a personal post I did. But I was going to check cashing places is in 1999. I think I was going to them until 2001, but I happened to find a receipt dated 1999. I was on WIC, I was on welfare. I had daycare vouchers and it makes me so mad when people think that I married someone to save <laughs> myself financially. Cause trust me, Joe came with a load of student debt, but he, luckily he loved me enough to take on my credit card debt. But even without his income, I would be a millionaire sitting here today because of hard work. And it isn't just hard work. You can work hard, but not smart and have no plan whatsoever and not know where you're going. So I just really wanted to tell you guys like hard work and a plan, it's limitless. Like when he says uncapped potential, uncapped income, it really does exist. Sometimes you have to manifest it for yourself. And so I just wanted to just, Oh, please listen, because I'm telling you, you can come out of it and you can develop a life you never imagined possible. So that was all. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. And, you know, many of you might say I'm in the same situation now, right? Y'all, when I started with Craig back in 2011, I was basically a bankrupt, failed scratch owner at 25 years old. I didn't, I didn't have a penny to start the scratch agency that I started, borrowed it all, didn't know what the heck I was doing, 23, 24 years old. Um, and I'm thankful that I met him. I started on the ground floor doing sales, found ways to add value to the other team members, to the whole operation, to him, and grew my role to where I started managing a small satellite that he had. And then with a few more months, the whole operation, within a year and two or three months, um, I was responsible for day-to-day -day operations of his entire business. And we grew like crazy. And I promise you, I, I grew with him, right? So all of you are at an amazing potential. There's so many people out there that are on fixed incomes. Now, I don't mean someone 79 years old living on Social Security. Y'all understand, most people have fixed incomes, right? They're earning a salary somewhere, maybe an hourly rate. They don't have the chance to, to give themselves a raise like you do. They don't have a chance to grow within their organization. They hit plenty of glass ceilings. They got to move different companies, this and that. Not you. You have the opportunity to grow where you are now. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But I want to ask you guys another question. There's no chat bubble here. But it's just a, a question I want to pose. What if every day you went home or if you're working from home, you went to the living room <laughs> and you looked your kids in the eye, you looked your spouse or your partner in the eye. Maybe you're a young gun, young buck, and you look your parents in the eye um, and they asked you this question. Did you do your all today for us and for our family? Did you lay it all on the line? Did you give 100 percent today? What if they asked you that question? How would you answer that? Literally every day. Now, ladies, gentlemen, are we going to have some down days? Sure. Are we going to have some down weeks? Absolutely. But are we trending the right direction, right? Is our stock moving up and to the right? Sure, there's going to be some downs here and there, but are we moving up and to the right? What if they asked you that question every single day? Would you be able to answer it in an honest way? Yes, I laid it all on the line today. In fact, I had a great day. Or maybe you didn't close a ton of sales, but you lined up some great deals for the next few days, right? What you're doing is you're doing it for yourself, for your family, for your future self, for your future family, for your next generation, right? I know this sounds really serious because it is. I'm about to show you all in just a minute just how serious this really is. What I want you to focus on at the end of the day is just maximizing your potential. And I promise you, you're, you have way more than you think. 
way more than you think you are capable of so much more. I, I used to ask this question all the time at like live events, you know, what's possible more, right? I would have a big thing on the, on the slide, more in huge letters. What's possible more, right? Beth, our top agent, you know, writes 125, 150 items a month, like it's clockwork, she's hit 200 a couple of times. If when she was doing 60, 70, 80 items a month, within just her first few months, if we had stopped challenging her, encouraging her, motivating her, training her, would she have gotten where she is today? Maybe, because she has got drive. I'll tell you, she has a lot of inner drive. But, you know, we didn't just settle. We encouraged, motivated, trained. Why does somebody that's already writing over 100 hours a month need training? Because we can all get better. Right. But what's beautiful about Beth and others on our team, and I hope people on your team, is that they own their own goals. They own their own development. Right. Because remember, you're going to push and drive yourself much further than you will if your owner is trying to pull you along or your manager is trying to pull you along. Hop in that car, gun it to 88, and let's go. Let's go. And I don't want you to cheat. Now, I don't mean cheating applications. Don't do that. Right. Don't lie. Don't delete accidents or claims or whatever. What I mean by don't cheat is don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. I'm about to show you all something. And I want to give a little disclaimer here. Okay. I am not your financial advisor, right? This is not a recommendation to make any specific investment decisions. Okay. But I wanted to show you all the power of compounding. It's the eighth wonder of the world the power of compounding, and how honestly you can change the trajectory of your future, your financial future for yourself and for your family. All right. I spent some time this morning while I was making the PowerPoint and went to smartasset.com. They have a nice little investment calculator. And I was plugging in different numbers. Y'all, this will make you sick if you think about it. I don't know how old y'all are. I just turned 37. I've been working for like since after college, 16 years, right? 16 years. Um, and I, I was thinking, man, what if I had just been investing $500 a month or even just $250 a month? I've been investing now for a couple of years, but gosh, look how much money is left on the table. Car payments. You'll never look at a car payment again. All right. Think about how much money we spend on car payments for a depreciating asset. You know, it makes me sick to think about. But think about this, y'all. What if you made an extra $500 a month? This extra five hundred dollars a month because you're generating more sales, more new business, investing that money over thirty years on what the S and P has averaged, the S and P five hundred has averaged over the past like eighty years. Yes, there's some years it goes down 20, 30 percent, but like this year it's up twenty five percent. Last year it was up twenty five percent. You know, it's averaged around nine percent or so a year for like almost a century. Five hundred dollars a month for thirty years, y'all, is almost a million dollars. Can you can you imagine that? You today, there is no reason, there is no reason why you all cannot be millionaires in the future. But it starts by bringing in more income. We got to bring in more income, take care of those personal goals, paying down debt, all those things, start saving for the future, doing it for yourself, for your future family. Imagine the trajectory of your family tree, what it would look like if you started thinking more long term. Okay, don't cheat yourself. And y'all start saving for the future. By God, now don't just buy Dogecoin or Bitcoin. Again, I'm not giving you any investment advice, but start saving and investing for the future. Your future self will thank you, I promise. And I'll only want a 1% override commission on whatever you earn. I'm kidding. Your role in growth within the agency. This actually was a slide that I added. Kenneth or somebody chatted a question. Gosh. Um, Kenneth said, what was one of your biggest challenges you had to overcome being a sales manager slash agency manager? He asked that kind of before we got started. And I said, ooh, Kenneth, that's a good question. What are some biggest challenges that I had? Had me thinking, I need to add a slide about your role within the agency. Maybe you won't always be a producer. Maybe you won't always be a customer service representative. Do you see yourself adding so much value to your agency owner and to the team to where you can grow? within the agency, right? That you can become a service leader, a sales leader, an office manager, maybe like the VP of the office. Maybe you get to some point where you're kind of running the agency or you get to a point where you can help your agency owner manage a satellite location. Maybe some of you and some of you chatted that you aspire to be your own agent, right? Your own agency owner sometime. sometime. That's wonderful. 
Think about your role within the agency also potentially growing. Now, some of you might say, nope, I don't want to manage anybody. I'm not all about that. I just want to do my thing at the highest level that I can. Great. That's wonderful. Just take advantage, do the most that you can every day to add value. Add value to the agency owner, add value to yourself. And I promise you're going to grow, whether it's in your current role or in different roles within the agency as you grow. Now, I'm going to go over some resources that we have on the platform. Um, for, uh, they're in the CWC documents at WigginsUniversity.com. Going to go over some documents that you might have seen, we might have even talked about in the past, but hopefully it'll help facilitate some good discussion before we get to some conversations here in just a few minutes. I look forward to chatting, not yet, don't, don't volunteer to role play yet, with some people about their personal goals. Maybe we can back into um, a general idea of what their production and activity goals should be. Let's talk first about the pyramid of minimum expectations. Now notice, this is minimum expectations. Now these are for Craig Wiggins agency team members. This isn't yours, but if after two or three months, a team member's not doing an average of two items a day, which would be a trend of around 40 items a month, or doing an average of 10 quotes a day, which is quoting three to four households, not 10 different prospects, but three to four households, or not making at least 10 calls an hour, which is only one call every six minutes. And y'all think about it, most phone calls are voicemails, right? And they take maybe 90 seconds in between each dial, you know, the dial, Call, leave message, quick note in the system, next, next, right? Finding that rhythm, finding that metronome. If they're not able to meet these minimum expectations, they just don't work with us. They don't. What are your agency's minimum expectations? I don't know. I hope you have them. But these aren't goals. These are minimum expectations. What the best team members do is they don't just shoot to be trending 40 plus items. We're not riding them much on how many quotes are doing, how many calls are doing. No, the best agents are shooting for three to four policies a day, 12 to 15 quotes a day and 100 plus calls a day. They don't do ors. See, for us, it's or. The production is good. We're not really worried too much about the rest of the pyramid. If the production is not where it needs to be, but they're doing the right number of quotes, we can figure that out. We can figure out why they did 10 quotes but weren't able to get at least two policies from those. We can listen to calls, coach them, role play with them, et cetera, make sure they're not saying the wrong things, that they are saying the right things, that they're being consistent by following the CDBC sales process, et cetera. But if they don't have the quotes, then we got to have the activity. I mean, come on, y'all, picking up the phone one time every six minutes, <laughs> that's not work. It's not, I just had trees planted in my backyard. Those guys were out there for like five, six hours. They work way harder than I will this entire week, physically. Think about it, right? Picking up the phone is not hard. Yes, it can be hard to stay positive, to stay focused. I get all that. Um, but y'all, these, these are our minimum expectations, but I don't want you to shoot for minimums. I want you to shoot for what your potential is. So what, what is that? That's what we're going to talk about today. Another uh, document from the platform is the daily training and action plan worksheet. Now, this daily training and action plan worksheet, I think is something that would be great for you to fill out first thing every morning as you're knocking out your 15 to 30 minutes of Wiggins University training, CWC on demand training. First thing every morning, y'all, training and development should never take a day off ever, right? Everybody can keep getting better, even if you've been in our program for months or years. And you say, Joseph, I know it all. I can promise you, you probably haven't watched everything on the platform. And repetition is also really, really important. Repetition is crucial. So what videos did you watch this morning? Maybe just jot down the chapter titles or at least the course that you were going through. What were some overall notes that you have? What things do you want to work on? And what were your biggest takeaways? Just take a few minutes to fill this out. Maybe you share it with your agency owner. Maybe you don't. Maybe just keep it for yourself. Mental notes on what you trained on that day. See, I want you to have goals of training and development too. You want to get the production? Let's get better. Let's get butter, as Craig says, right? Get butter is what, the way it sounds like. I love when new people join CWC and they're like, what does get butter mean? Because we, we say that a lot. When Craig Wiggins says the word better, it sounds like butter. So he says things like, like get butter. That, that's why where it came from. You want to hit your goals? Train, train your brain, practice, role play. Practice makes permanent, all right? Utilize this training worksheet first thing every morning. I think it's a wonderful strategy. Now, all throughout the day, we have the CWC daily activity tracker. 
Now, this is where on the second page, you can also list what your training was for the day. Okay, fine. You can list your training there. But here, we're tracking our calls. How many calls are we doing throughout the day? Do a little check, mark, check marks or stars, however you want to kind of notate those calls. What objections you heard that day, even if you overcame them? Your agency owner or manager might be able to look at those objections and help you with them if it's something that you couldn't have overcome. Or maybe you're getting common objections that you're pretty good at, but a new team member might need to go over. So maybe you can help them with the objections. So I want to hear what objections you heard. I want to see who you quoted that day. Now, there's 10 different lines here, y'all. If you're truly following the CDBC sales process, it is not likely that you're going to do the full sales process quote with 10 different prospects. That's just not likely. All right. I want to see at least maybe four, four or five households quoted. What was their phone number? Why do I want to know that? So I can pull up the call, listen to the call. And what was the result? You know, did they not qualify? Did we write them? Are we closing them tomorrow? Or did we just X-state them for the future because they maybe have one or two tickets or accents and will look a little bit better in March, for example? Just a quick little note. What sales we made for the day? What was our production? What did we train on? And this here at the bottom, my success is today. This is something that when I was working more directly with Craig Wiggins team members, when I got these daily activity trackers, I didn't look at the first page. I flipped it over. This was front and back. I said, I want to look at the successes. I started there. What do they feel good about? Before they leave today, I want to know what they felt good about. Maybe they, maybe they did have their biggest production day ever, or they closed their first auto home umbrella sale in one call. Okay, fine. Production base is good. But maybe they overcame an objection better than they ever had. Teed up a potential referral partner meeting. You know, they're having coffee with a loan officer or something the next few days. Maybe they had their biggest activity day ever, and they know that that's going to result in future sales, right? I want to know what a team member feels good about before they leave at the end of the day. And you know what would drive me crazy is sometimes it would be blank. That would drive me crazy. I'd give it back to them. I'd say, nope, I want to know what you feel good about. If you gave your all day, if you worked hard today, there's got to be something you feel good about. I want to know that. And then we back into the activity, the quotes, and the sales, all right? So wonderful tool. We only require the daily activity tracker for new team members. Once they're writing 45, 50 items a month, we're not requiring that they turn it in every day once they're meeting those minimum expectations of an average of two items a day, which is around 40 to 44 items a month, depending on the business month. Some of our best team members in the past kept doing it. Uh, one of our team members, before she moved to Washington several years ago, I uh, went to go visit her. She was killing it, doing great. Name was Jessica. And went to her branch, her office, because we had multiple agencies just popping in to meet with her and a couple of the team members. And I saw um, this big, thick notebook on her desk. And I kind of joked with her because I hate paper. I'm not a big fan of paper. You won't find a stitch of paper in this office, right? If it's not in the system, it didn't happen. I'm just that type of guy. We got to stay super duper organized. Notebooks get lost. Papers get lost, whatever. But I was joking with her. I said, what's in that big, big notebook you got there? And she opened it up and started flipping through page after page after page of these that she'd been filling out for months. I hadn't been asking her for them. I said, yeah, I love this. I go through it all the time. You know, it might not be time for someone for someone to be called in my lead management system, but I'll kind of flip through this, read my notes on so-and-so and be like, you know what, I'm going to try them. And it's just weird. I, I get a lot of success just by kind of randomly going through and hitting some of these people again, even though they haven't been scheduled yet in my lead management system. I just kind of flip through and I just think it's important to have. I said, girl, keep doing that. That's good. I think it's a good strategy. So she was pushing and driving herself, not waiting for us to say, hey, did you turn in your report? Like, what's that movie? TPS reports, the office, not the office. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, the stapler, right? I'm not a big fan of reports, just a report. There needs to be a purpose. Office space. Thanks, Eric. There needs to be a purpose, all right? But what I loved about Jessica was when I saw that she did that, I was like, okay, she gets this. She gets this. That, that's a wonderful tool. She used this tool and resource to continue to help her even after we stopped requiring it daily. She was pushing and driving herself. A couple other resources, y'all, and then we're going to get to some conversation with a couple of people. All right. Uh, for those that are comfortable having a more open, honest conversation, we'll get to that in just a second. 
There's two other documents I want to highlight that are from the platform. All of these are on the platform in the document section, the subfolder for uh, team members, agency, agency pro pro documents and processes for team members. Uh, we have our employee performance evaluation and goal setting form for sales. What a mouthful of a title, but I tried to title it so that people would be able to find it. You know, this is a more formal document that you guys can actually go through and work on yourself, get with your agency owner, get with your agency manager to go over things like what are your outbound call goals? Are you, are you currently averaging 40 or 50 now and you're trying to get to 60 or 70? Are you shooting for 100? I want reasonable and attainable goals, right? Reasonable and attainable goals, but they need to be stretch, right? It doesn't just need to be like one more than what you've been averaging on calls. Maybe it's 20% more, 30% more, right? How many appointments are you going to try to have with centers of influence? How many quotes are you going to average each day? Life and retirement, uh, conversations and or meetings and or uh, quotes, however you guys are tracking it. Use it using your lead management system. Again, sticky notes, notebooks, stuff gets lost, forgotten about. Leverage your technology. Leverage your technology, whether it's Allstate Lead Manager, agency MVP, follow-up tool, whatever lead management system that you're utilizing in your agency with your carrier, using it. What are the production requirements? All right, so we'll see how we're backing our way in from activity to quotes, conversations, to actual production, and also training goals, training goals. So this, these are in Excel. This is Excel. So you can change all these things, all these different objectives. Notice how we have like other in here. You sit down with them after going through your personal goals, creating what your financial goals are, backing into what you're going to need to actually do to make it happen. But then guess what? We're going to actually have to do it. This shouldn't just be an exercise that we just do once and then put it on a shelf and it becomes shelf help with a bunch of dust on it. No, that's not going to get you to where you want to be and to where you want to go. So this is for sales team members, for our service team members. We also have an employee performance evaluation goal setting form for service. See, in this document on the platform, it's an Excel file. There's two tabs. So at the bottom, this, the first tab is sales. The second tab is service. Here, you might have goal, uh, goals for outbound calls for reviews, handling incoming calls, generating PNC leads, life and or retirement leads, utilizing your systems, actually getting production, right? Whether you're writing it yourself or you're passing it to another team member, what are your specific goals? Y'all, if you don't know the destination, how are you going to get there? How are you going to get there, All right? If we don't know where we're going. Don't just say, I want more, I want to do better, right? Specific, measurable goals. And of course, training. Our service team members, you know, need, need as much training, if not more, right? Because in fact, think about it. You're talking to more customers in a day than many of your sales team members will in like a week, right? So you need to be, be owning your own training and development as well. So again, this is in the platform, employee performance evaluation and goal setting form. It's in Excel, so you can edit them to make them your own. Now, y'all, we've been going for a long time, and I hope that this has been beneficial to you guys to really start thinking of yourself in a much higher role, right? Think about the opportunity that you have within your agency to push and drive yourself to get way more specific about what you're working for, not just for my family, for my future. Let's get specific with it. What I'd like to do now is chat with somebody. I'd like to chat with somebody about their personal goals. It doesn't have to be too crazy personal, but I want it to be a real personal me measurable goal. And let's kind of do a role play on setting up your actual agency goals. All right, Kenneth Turner and Amanda Lord. Let's start there. Let's start there. I might be able to get to a couple more. And Allison, do you want to be like the owner? You want to pretend like you're their owner talking with them about their personal goals and stuff like that, maybe backing into like what their activity and production goals should be? Sure, absolutely. Okay, let's do that. So Kenneth um, Turner, I'm going to allow to talk. And Amanda Lord, wait, did I do it? Oh, yeah, it worked. Uh, Amanda Lord. And let me try to get one more in. Trista saying, please. All right, guys, I've got a couple others. So if we have time after Trista, Kenneth, and Amanda, I'm going to be able to grab one of y'all too. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for volunteering. So y'all, I want this to, to be as real as possible. Let's start with Kenneth. 
Um, hey. hey, man, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Very good. Tell us where you're from, what agency and what state? Lexington, Kentucky. Um, a shield insurance. Uh, and I've been doing this for almost a year now. So. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad that you volunteered. What I want to do is just pretend that Allison is your agency owner. Share with her your personal financial goal, what that dollar amount is, when you want to complete it. And let's see what kind of feedback she gives you. Y'all talk a little bit about what your activity's been, averaging, what it should be, what your production is. I know she doesn't have your comp plan. She doesn't know if you yeah. need to write nine more items a month or 21 more items a month. I don't know. But I just kind of want to hear how this plays out. And maybe it'll make you comfortable as you sit down with your actual owner to have this conversation. And all the 500 people watching can get comfortable to have this conversation. So y'all just take it away. Kenneth, tell Allison your financial goal and let's see where this goes. Okay. So I'm extremely interested in real estate. And um, that's one thing that holds deep with me. I truly believe that real estate's a huge uh, vehicle that will take me and my family uh, uh, and will achieve my goals. Uh, next year in 2022, uh, from this job in the insurance sales, I want to make 250000 And I write this down every morning and right before I leave. It's something that I write. Um, and then uh, I also want to invest 100000 in real estate next year. Um, and that number should be more close to 150, um, truthfully, compared to like from the 250 that I want to make, should probably be closer to 150 or 175 of the amount that I want to invest. All right, Kenneth, can I interrupt you first? Are you an agency owner or a producer? Producer. Wow. I love your goals. Are they attainable? Hold on. Let me let Allison take oh, over. Those are big goals, dude. Big goals for an insurance producer. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to shut up. Let me let Allison be your boss, be your manager. No, you're good. Go ahead, Kenneth. What were, when he said, is it attainable? What were you going to say? Um, so I also do a uh, commercial auto as well. So that ah. would be something that boosted up as well. But gotcha. even, even taking out the commercial auto, I still think that I should be able to attain that with my comp plan. Okay. So, um, so my average that I should get, um, in terms of items, I, I, I believe I need to be around the 140 to 150 mark. And last month I did 50 items. Uh, I think 48 of them were standard and three of them were non-standard and that's just from cold calling. And I think I had two home mailers. Uh, so a lot of my stuff has been straight cold calling because we are a fairly new agency. So we're kind of waiting to do all of the, uh, the advertisements in terms of home mailers and all that stuff. So 90, like 95 to 99% of my stuff has been cold calling. So. Okay. Okay. This is good. All right. So I am super excited and that you have such big goals and I, want to be there with you as you improve and as you grow. So I have some ideas on how we can focus on getting you there. So Kenneth, do you know your close rate? Uh, it's probably around 10 to 15%. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So if you want to write a hundred, we're going to go with 150. If you want to write 150 items a month and there's 20 business days in the month, that is, about eight, seven to eight items a day is what you're going to need to be writing. Okay. So if you need to write eight items a day and your average policy has about one and a half items, cause you're going to have some cars with one car, some car policies with four cars, but let's just say that one and a half items per policy is the average that you run as a um, producer. That is, um, hold on, let me do the math. Eight divided by 1.5. That is about six policies a day that you would need to be writing. So if you're writing six policies a day and your close rate is 10%, that is 60 quotes a day. No, that's that is, not just um that's not just like families, right? That's like a home, maybe an umbrella, and then in the auto, meaning three. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All those individual quotes for sure. Yes. yes. So here's how we're going to get you to your goal. It is a hundred percent achievable without a doubt. Absolutely. But we're going to have to do a three prong approach with how we get you there. First, we need to improve your close rate. You can double your production by doing the same amount of quoting. If you can close twice as many people. 
So yeah. you only have so many hours in a day. Kenneth, you need to sleep. You can't do six calls a day today. Yeah. So first things first, we need to get you from 10% to 20% and then 20% to 50%. So we need to figure out, are you, know, are you giving up too easy with objections? Are your quotes accurate? Are you using all the price points you can? So close rate is the first thing we need to work on. Um, the second thing we need to work on is getting your average, and I know this isn't your average, Kenneth, but your average item count from 1.5 items per policy to like 2.5. Yeah, that's definitely a problem for me is the, is the the doing the bundle deal. Like if uh, someone calls in and it's only an auto, sometimes I don't ask for the renters, which is something that I need to be doing. But if I did that for every person, you know, maybe 20 to 40% of them actually go for it. I mean, how many more items is that, you know? I so. need... You'd go to like 75 items a month. Right? Yeah. So then yeah. last month I probably could have closed 70 items if I, <laughs> you know, if I did that, but well, I mean, well, I, mean I did, but, but no, no. Yeah. So, and then the other thing is, um, and I cold called for two years when I was an agency owner first started out phone book with my best friend. Um, hmm. it can be done hundred percent, but another way is using your social media pre presence and to take it a step further because you are into real estate i encourage you to join some real estate facebook groups i i already am great um does your state have um host advantage home share host advantage i'm not quite sure okay so look into it or it might be called something different but basically it is a it is a writer that allows you to ensure short-term rentals like Airbnb, VRBO. Get in those groups, find people, post, become an insurance expert. I'm your local short-term rental expert in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, you know, you may not be covered by your current agent. Maybe they don't know that you're doing short-term rental, but trust me, if they find out and you got a claim, you may have a problem, like call me. So it is much easier to close deals if you're the only person in the fight in the ring and time-wise, if they're calling you, right? So I mm -hmm. want you to use social media to get more exposure and leads, but I also want you to focus on that real estate because not only can you tap into that market, but you can learn. It's a passion of yours. So you'll really enjoy yeah. it. But I want you to go deeper with each client. I want you to close more lines in each household you're working. And I want you to work smarter and not harder. And we will get you there. Okay. I love it. Though. That's great. I think that's great. Kenneth, just by bundling better, dude, you're going to get another 20, 30 items a month to get to that 150. You're going to have to basically double your activity and, or get better at the process with your close rates. Allison yeah. did a great job giving you good advice. You need to sit down and do the actual numbers and, and create your actual goals um, and talk with your owner about it, right? Commit to it together. Don't just keep it to yourself. Don't keep it oh, to yourself. Yeah, Share do. it. Good. Do all the time. <laughs> Good, dude. Well, I'm excited to have you in the program. And I love your big goals. Now, you guys are independent, correct? Yes, we are. Okay. So for others watching this call, you're thinking, what? Um, yeah, the independent world is just different than captive. We work with a lot of captives. So, dude, keep rocking, keep rolling. Let's move next to Trista. Trista, are you there? I am. How are you? Beautiful. Awesome. I'm fantastic. Where are you from? What agency and what state? I am from Santa Rosa, California, and I'm with Novato Insurance Allstate. Wonderful. Start with Allison by sharing your personal goal. Yes. So personal goals that I'm working on for 2022. I just recently purchased um, my first home. And okay. <laughs> thank you. And um, now my husband and I want to put some money aside to have a baby. We have to have uh, IVF, just some medical issues. And so mm -hmm. we want to save for IVF. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said that it's about a uh, twenty to $25,000 for at least, you know, one attempt. And that's kind of money I don't have sitting on the sideline mm -hmm. um, right now. Um, this year I've ended, you know, well, calculating what I think I'm going to make in December. Uh, I've made 70 grand this year. So I'd like, I need an additional, you know, 20 to 30. So I'm trying to make, uh, in the year 2022, a hundred thousand dollars so I can save for that <laughs> procedure. Okay. All right. So guys, we're going to be making up a lot of numbers and just right. 
because this is just isn't so just if, don't be like that ain't right Allie so just FYI all right of course. so this is awesome so the one thing um I want you to consider is taxes the more you make the more they take so yeah, just notice that <laughs> yeah, so we actually probably need to go um more if you need 25,000 we probably more need to target 40,000 sure as as your income. And so what is your current close rate? Um, my, my boss just gave me for the month of November and I got 30%. That is amazing. Okay. So you're good on that. Do you know what your average item per policy is? Like, are you going deep into the household? Just, just recently I have, um, I think just this month alone, I've been closing four to five items per household. Um, but this is just something that I've just started changing around. Okay, wonderful. All right, how about, so you're doing excellent with getting as many items out of each customer you're talking to, and you're doing excellent in the close rate. Um, we just need to get you talking to more people. So tell me about what where you're getting your current leads from. Uh, so my boss purchases live leads, and mm-hmm. I have uh, a lot of, uh, I have like two or three re- uh, realtor friends. Mm-hmm. So a lot of um, referrals, personal references, and live leads. Okay. All right. So we've got the live leads. You're working your referral. Do you have any centers of influence? I don't. Okay. So in order for us- I honestly get- don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. So in order for you to get to that next level, to that extra $3,300 a month, what I want you to do is I want you to keep your core things going and your improvements going, what you're doing is working and it's working great. And then I want us to have a baby fund. Okay. Okay. I want us because your why will make you do things that are so uncomfortable that you would not normally do because you want that baby. Like it, like I literally have goosebumps, you guys, because my story, I was a single mom that just could not depend on my high school sweetheart anymore. And I needed to get out of that situation. The things you will do for your why are insane. So we're going to make this, this new business, this focus be baby focused. I got to make $3,300 a month out of this new business. And I want you to try different lead sources. So centers of influence are people that will send you business so that you're not taking the time to call out because you're already doing that with that other, right? That it's just coming to you. I want you to connect with real estate agents, loan officers. If you talk to loan officers that call in for business, you're already writing and they want to change the closing date or they have a question about the wording. Be their friend. Ask them, who are you working with? Can I be your VIP insurance agent? I'm amazing. I'll get things to you right when you need it. I'm here for you. Like, I want you to connect with people who will literally send you business that has like a 90% close ratio. Guys, that was our close rate with mortgage referrals. Every mortgage referral we got for homeowners insurance had over a 90% close rate. Wow. Get with car dealerships. And then I also want you to ask the people that you're already writing, because clearly you're doing a good job. I want you to ask them to share your information, either on a Google review or on their own social media platform. Say, hey, if I send you a picture of my business card, would you mind telling your friends and family what a great experience you had? You, you literally might never have to make a call again, mm-hmm. literally. But I want you to have your, your core bill bucket. I want you to keep that up, keep improving that. And then I want you to chip away at that 3,300 a month baby fund. And I want those lead sources to go into that bucket. So I literally want you to track it. Like I made a thousand dollars out of those lead sources. Okay. I made 1500 out of those lead sources. And then before you know it, I think your baby bank fund will be filled up. Perfect. I actually just wrote this all down. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Just uh, good luck. Good you luck. Do it. Starting a family is going to cost you um, dearly, but if you, if it all works out, it's going to be worth every penny. So that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Amanda, Amanda Lord, are you with us? Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Jump okay. straight in with Allie. We're down to about five minutes. So we got, we should have plenty of time. Okay. So my financial goal is in 2022 to make 60,000 or more and 10,000 on top of that every year. Okay. Awesome. And tell me um, a little bit about like where your strengths are now. How's your close rate? Um, so 
My close rate right now sits between 23 and 25% of my total quotes. Okay. And how are you doing with like getting more policies in the household? Like if somebody calls and says, I need an auto quote, do you just do the auto quote? Or are you going for more? No. Um, I multi-policy last month was a hundred percent. Uh, but I literally got my binding authority the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, yeah. So I sold 16 items in four working days for a total premium of 10 K and I quoted home auto pup on everything sold home auto pup on everything. So now Amanda, I you're with pup. Curtis, right? You're Curtis Osler. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I got to see you this week in our team training session. I'm excited yeah. that you're with Curtis's agency now. She's I'm not brand new to Allstate. Like some people thinking, how'd she write 16 items in four days? Right. She knows a thing or two about a thing or two. But when I was coaching her, you, Amanda, earlier this week um, in our team training session, I was so proud, you know, because, man, she was talking CWC like she's been doing it for years, quotes everybody umbrella has already written all this business. You're awesome. So I just wanted to clarify to people who've been thinking, she did that in her first four days. <laughs> so anyways, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I, my background, I live in Wyoming, work remote for Utah. I was an office manager, sales. I did commercial uh, and I was the claims advocate <laughs> for a good three years here in Wyoming. So that's amazing. That's awesome. Okay. So do you have an idea yet? on what it would take to make that financial goal you have set item wise, production wise? Um, yeah, so I need to hit 60 items a month or 45,000 in premium. Uh, okay. It ends up being 20 quotes a day if I take that four day average um, and then four items sold a day. Okay. All right, so let's do, we'll do the 60 items um, it, it, as the goal that we discussed about. So in order to get where you wanna go, you, you wanna do 60 items and you're averaging um, about a 25% close rate. So we would need to, sorry, I got the music in my calculator. I think that's 240 items being quoted if, I'm, if my math is correct at a 25%, yes. All right, so 240 items is what you need to quote. And then I'm going to use an average of 1.7 items per, per policy for the math with you. So you'll need to quote, um, let's see, 142 policies. And then if we divide that by 20 business days, you'll have to do seven quotes a day in order to achieve your goal. We have agencies with staff doing 10 quotes a day, every day, no problem. So you doing seven quotes with keeping up your 25% close rate, you're there. You're absolutely there. So is there anything inside of you that is feeling like you can't get seven quotes a day? No, Any now that you break it down, I feel like I lowballed myself. <laughs> I was about to say, Amanda, you need to shoot higher. Well, yeah, I average 20 quotes a day right now. So I hit my 20th quote today before this call at one. <laughs> wow. Wow. So I, uh, Curtis texted me last night and asked for my address for a Christmas card. So I'm going to reply and tell him to warm up his checkbook because you're uh -huh. coming for it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so like really, you know, just really triple checking that math with your owner and making sure that you didn't, because like earlier when I was helping Kenneth, I actually multiplied instead of divided and I could have given him a heart attack. Like Kenneth, you can do 50 quotes a day. So, it, you know, just, you definitely want to understand your comp plan, your activity, your close rates so that you aren't selling yourself short and that you really understand what it's going to take on the daily. So you can make sure you're re reaching that so that when your paycheck comes, it's exactly what you expected or more. So yeah. I think that is amazing. Yeah. And I have like pup goals within just like me personally, um, that is actually up on the all state, um, advisor page or whatever on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if anyone from all state wants to chime in on that one. Um, but yeah, it's nine pups a month and then four cross sell pups. So I just pulled the report for 2550 and going through that. 
That is amazing. Great job. Great job. So I do want to say something that she just said, just so it doesn't get lost on anybody. But when I was an agency owner in 2017 and I joined Craig Wiggins coaching, it took my agency to another level just on umbrella sales. Like I literally went up almost a whole point out of four. So 25% improvement joining them in October. We wrote more personal umbrella policies in October than we had the entire year, literally the entire year. So, you know, if you're selling, let's say, and this is maybe an agency wide goal, but let's say you're selling 75 households a month and you're not selling umbrellas and Finally, you guys start selling to 30% of your customers. Guys, that added up over 12 months or just for the individual producers could be huge, huge amounts of money into their employees' pockets just by adding an umbrella sale on to one third of your prospects that I bet a lot of you are not asking if we had to be honest with ourselves because you're just assuming they don't need an umbrella. So I just wanted to add on to your personal umbrella goal that I think that that is phenomenal and that, and it's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We missed the personal umbrella boat from 2006 to 2017. So you're not alone, but don't leave that business on the table because it's there to be bought. Good stuff. Well, I appreciate Allison, you being the agency owner and helping have these conversations. Everyone on this call, have these conversations. Set your personal goals, and that's going to be something that you're going to be working towards, not just some quota, but your goal. We do need to pick a winner real quick for the CWC swag bag. Allie, would you like to do the honors? Um, I will let you pick. And while you're deciding, can I just say one thing about leads yeah. in, the, in the chat? Guys, My age, I didn't buy internet leads. I haven't bought an internet lead since 2005, and my agency wrote 175 to 250 items a month. I didn't buy live transfers. Not that, not that I have anything against them, but some of you are like, where are my leads? I don't want to be fighting with other people. I want to be on my own. And I love requotes and winbacks because it's all right there. And I can quote 10 times faster, refreshing somebody versus starting over on rapport. So please do not think because your agency isn't buying you leads that you're at some huge disadvantage. Trust me, they've done their research. There are agents that buy $5,000 worth of leads and close none. If it don't work, it don't work. That was my situation. So please do not get, you know, feel disadvantaged or upset because you don't have fresh leads coming in. There is business to get for everyone. We just got to do the work. So I just wanted to say that. Good stuff. Well, I have to go with Amanda, you know, with her passion on umbrellas, her quick start so far with uh, Curtis's agency following the process, love the attitude. I loved your post when you posted it this morning in one of the groups about your goals. I don't know if you knew that we were gonna be doing this training today or not, uh, but that wasn't even in our group. That was a different group that I'm just a member of. And I, I love that you went and put out in the universe. So I'm gonna hit 60 hours this month with X number of umbrellas, whatever. That was really cool, Amanda. So shoot Allison with one L, Allison with one L at craigwigginscoaching.com and email with your shirt size and she'll put together a cool swag bag with some CWC stuff for you, Amanda. Yep. Congratulations. That's pretty cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back to work. You got policies to write, people to protect and goals to hit and accomplish. I do want to challenge all of you to have this conversation this week with your agency owner and or manager. Let's get your goals established for this month, for the next few months as you're hitting all these other personal goals for next year and ongoing, all right? Take ownership of your destiny and let's make the most of your opportunity. Thank you to Allison. Thank you to our role play volunteers and for all of you for attending live and for those of you watching the recording. Now, let's get back to work. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.